Hi there, I'm Paul Belflem and this is Industrial Organization. In this presentation, we want to take a few minutes to analyze price and advertising decisions by a monopolist. The learning objectives are the following. We want to understand how a monopolist chooses the price of its good along with its advertising expenditure. We will analyze a model which is due to two economists, Dorfman and Steiner, and if you want some background reading, you can read section 6 to 1 in the textbook. Here is the model, which is, as you will see, quite uh, simple. We define the demand for some products as a function of two variables, the price, as usual, but also the level of advertising, which we note A. Well, as uh, the price, of course, decreases the quantity demanded, so we have a negative first order derivative of quantity demanded with respect to price. This is the usual law of demand. What we add here is that the derivative of the quantity demanded with respect to advertising is positive. So this translates the idea that consumers respond to more advertising by increasing the quantity they demand. Okay, so you can see advertising as a way to expand the demand for the monopolist. And so the monopoly firm is choosing both the price of the good and how much to advertise, uh, which is uh, symbolized by the letter A. It has some cost to produce the good, which is C of the quantity produced. And so we can write the problem of the monopolist as follows. It's maximizing its profit, profit depending on two variables, the price and the level of advertising. So this is what the monopolist chooses. And the profit has the following form. This is here the revenue, price times the quantity, minus total cost of the production of the product, minus the cost of advertising. So A is the advertising expenditure. Right? So how do we solve this problem? We will look at the first order condition for the two uh, choice variables, for the price and the advertising. And as you will see from there, we will uh, derive what we can call a law that uh, will actually decide how the monopolist chooses both price and advertising. Okay, so let's, let's do that. First of all, let's look at the first order condition with respect to price. Okay, I have written down again the profit function of the monopolist. So let us first of all take the first order derivative with respect to price. Price changes the revenue in two ways by directly with the price at which the goods are sold, but also by affecting the quantity demanded. The price affects the cost because it changes the quantity demanded and the quantity demanded will determine how, how costly it will be to produce all that. And here you see that the price doesn't have play any role. Okay, so what we have is the usual uh, first order condition. So that tells that actually the marginal revenue, which is the first two elements here, should be equal to the marginal cost. C prime is our notation for the marginal cost. Okay. Now the rest is to just to play a little bit with this equation uh, in order to find what we already found a couple of weeks ago when we expressed the monopoly pricing formula. And this is what we have here. On the left hand side we have the ratio between price minus marginal cost divided by price. Remember we call this the learner index or the markup. And we know, we remember, that this is inversely related to the price elasticity of demand. Okay, so, so far, nothing new. Uh, the monopolist chooses its price according to uh, the monopoly pricing rule, which equates the markup or the learner index to the inverse of the price elasticity of demand. Okay, now let's look at the second first order condition, the one with respect to advertising. Okay, so advertising has three effects here. A direct effect on the quantity sold. Remember, the more you spend in advertising, the larger this quantity demanded. Okay, so if, you, uh, if the monopolist decides to spend more in advertising, it increases revenue, it increases cost as well because there is more to produce, and it increases the spending. So this is the cost of advertising, right? So taking the derivative with respect to uh, a, with respect to advertising, this is what you have. QA, remember we wrote this above, this is the first order derivative of the quantity demanded with respect to advertising. Okay, so that's the marginal revenue of increasing advertising. This is the marginal cost of 
the producing more good because you make more advertising and there is more demand. And here, one is the derivative of a. I've put this on the right hand side, so the minus one becomes one on the right hand side. This is the marginal spending in advertising. Okay, so basically, this uh, equation tells you that if you spend one more dollar in advertising, this is, or one more euro in advertising, this is uh, the extra cost you have in terms of advertising, and this is the extra profit you gain in terms of what you sell on the market. Okay, the revenue minus the marginal costs of producing more. Okay, now you will see why, but we want to have the same left hand side as on the previous uh, equation. So we uh, here we've got p minus c prime that multiplies qa. So this is what you have here. I've divided by qa, uh, and I divide through by the price. Okay, it's divided by p here and divided by p there. And then I, miss, I make some extra arrangements. So I multiply and divide by Q. I multiply and divide by A. And so that allows me to isolate two uh, fractions that make sense. Okay, so here, uh, this is the advertising elasticity of demand. So this is the inverse of this ratio here. And what remains there is the ratio between the advertising expenditure and the revenue. P times Q. Okay, so let's go further now because the, the monopolist is choosing both the price and the advertising. So at the optimum, the two uh, first order conditions have to hold. Okay, this one and the previous one. Okay, so we need to put them together, and that you see now why we have written them in this way uh, because we've got the same left hand side, and if We've got two equalities with the same left hand side. It means that the right hand sides of the two equalities must be equal. This is what we have written here. And rearranging, uh, we just keep uh, put this on the left hand side. And uh, yeah, uh, sorry, this is correct. Uh, we have put this on the left hand side. And what remains on the right hand side is the ratio of these two things. So let's now interpret what we have. On the left hand side we have what is called the advertising intensity. Okay, so that's the ratio between how much you spend in advertising, the advertising expenditure, divided by the revenue, the, the sales you make, price times the quantity. Okay, so it gives you um, uh, a measure of uh, what you can gain through advertising because it gives you for each euro you spend in advertising the, uh, the corresponding sales you can obtain. Okay, and this is equal to a ratio of two elasticities, the elasticity of demand uh, with respect to advertising and the elasticity of demand with respect to price. Okay, so the top one tells you by how much the quantity demanded, by which percentage the quantity demanded is going to increase for a given percentage increase of the advertising. Okay, so if you increase your advertising by 10%, it tells you by how many percent your demand increases. Okay, and the elasticity of demand with respect to price tells you the same thing, but uh, starting with a change in price. So it tells you by how much the quantity demanded will decrease if you increase the price by some percentage. Okay, so remember that we take this by convention as a positive number. So we take the uh, absolute value of the elasticity. Right, so, and this is all we wanted to do. So we have just looked at how the monopolist is going to choose the two variables, price and advertising, and from the maximization program, from the two first order conditions, we derive this rule here, which we can now summarize and say that a monopoly sets its advertising intensity to the ratio of the advertising elasticity of demand over the price elasticity of demand. Okay, so we will see uh, later in the ebook how to interpret this and also try to derive some testable, uh, testable hypothesis that we can confront to reality. And that's it for now. Thank you.